Hello everybody, this is Ogany Supreme here with another tutorial on how to program and turn. So today I'm going to show you guys how to use graphics to draw pictures and stuff with Turing. Yes, Turing can draw pictures. So Turing is a little more useful than you guys think. So first, I want to change the size and specs of my window. So I'm going to type view with a capital V and dot set with a capital S and it turned black indicating I typed it right and then graphics this is in quotations colon my X amount of pixels these are in pixels not rows and columns like the moving star program so graphics is 500 and then semicolon and then a Y to be 500 now just for the Heck of it, I'm going to show you guys how to change the title of the win of the window. You just comma and then title colon graphics introduction like that. Then comma then position. Now we can do top, semicolon left or right or bottom left, bottom right, or we can do center semicolon center and then end quotations now I'm just gonna say do a put statement this should be 500 by 500 pixels I don't know how to count pixels so just just uh trust me and the title should be graphics introduction and I'm gonna remove that space the position should be dead center well the position is right Again, I can't count pixels, so I'm going to guess that that is correct, because the normal window size is a bit different size than this. And the title, Graphics Introduction. Might be a bit hard to read, but hey, it's on my program. So, now let's uh, start drawing some stuff. So we're going to set some variables, let's say x, y, and then our second x value, and a second y value, and then c for color. We're going to set these as integers. We're not going to set these as reals because we cannot have a decimal value for a pixel. You can't have shapes in between pixels, I'm sorry. So, now we're going to give these variables values. Now in video games, you can make like the x and y values equal a certain value based on input or outcomes, something so. But I'm not doing any any controls here, so let's just make it 200. And then y is going to equal 200, and then c. Now c is color, and as I explained in the star, in the random moving star program, there are 256 colors starting from zero and ending with 255. If you download Turing, there should be a folder that says support. Mine does. I'm lucky. And then in that support folder, there's a help folder. And then in that help folder, there's an examples folder. In that examples folder, there are a bunch of example programs that teach you stuff to show you how to do certain things so one of them is called colors if you run it it'll show you each color and uh, what each number represents so for example 55 represents this shade of blue 32 represents this shade of blue some of the colors have very slight differences some of them have big differences like white black so I want to make this, I don't know, let's go red. Oh, red is 12. I like that color of red, so since I like it, I'm going to use it. So C equals 12. Now I'm going to draw a dot. So I'm going to type draw and then dot after and it turned black, meaning I typed it right and then an x variable, then a y variable, then a color. Since it's just one point, it's going to be x and y, it's just going to be one pixel. So if you have 
a computer that's small and it's 4K resolution, the pixels are going to be very small and you're not going to be able to see this. Even in this video, you might not see it, but the dot is right there where I'm pointing. So now let's say I want to draw a line. So I'm going to set this as 300, y2 as 300. So now I've got my x's and y's, and now I'm going to say my second x and my second y value. So it's x, first x, first y, second x, second y, and then color, because we're going from point to point in a straight line. So now, no, oh, I forgot to type, I forgot to change this to line. I gotta get rid of dot, so now it's just draw line. So now it's a straight line. Point A, point B. It might it, again it might be a little bit difficult to see, but that's that. So now let's say we want to draw a square. Now that we have our x's and y's the same. So we can draw a square, but we're not going to type square, we're going to type box, draw, then box. Think about box, the composer, and then box. I don't know, it's whatever helps you remember it's box and not square or rectangle or quadra quadrilateral. So draw a box, so it's just a box, it's not colored in. It might again it might be a bit difficult to see. But let's say we want to color it in. Just in between draw and box, we type fill. Then bam. You have our uh you have a filled rectangle, which you should be able to see. It's completely straight. Well it's a square because equal values. But if I make this for example 400 it's a rectangle now so that's that so now we're gonna draw an oval I'll just fill it so you guys can see it easier so all we're gonna do is type oval even though it could be a circle now there's something different about ovals than there is uh, boxes and lines from boxes and lines that drew from corner to corner or point to point. This is different. You draw your x and y value and then the second x and the second y are in points. So this would be the radius, the x radius, and this would be the y radius. So if I make it 300, it's going to be absolutely gigantic. So don't confuse yourself with that. So let's say we're going to make it 30. There's a circle, it's normal size, so the radius is 30. Now, keep in mind this is not the diameter, meaning from this point to this point is not 30, that's 60. From this point to the dead center, that's the radius. If you don't understand that, you should retake math. And if you make this 40, it should be long on the x side, and it is. For more extreme case, let's go 100. You can see just how long it is on the x, and how thin it is on the y. So, that is that. So now, you can draw even more stuff. You can draw a star by typing star. And it's just like that. Now, stars from point to point, so there's the star, so it's basically saying from this bottom left corner, so from this, this is the furthest part to the left, and this is the first down, so if you go like this and you make like a square, like I'll show you, if you go draw box and then x, y, x2, you can see the furthest left is uh is the furthest point which is the x and y and the furthest up and right 
is the second x and y. Now, keep in mind with graphics, you don't need to have the top right, the second x and y. You can make the top right or the top left, the second and the bottom right. You can do whatever you want. Organize it the whatever way you want. Now, you can also draw maple leaves by typing maple leaf. For you Canadians, you got a maple leaf. Here, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it bigger. Maple leaf, like in the Canadian flag. Yes, Turing even has its own little, like, function, if you will, for drawing maple leaves. So now let's say you want to draw a picture. So, in my instance, I'm going to draw the Canadian flag, because I'm Canadian. So we can make a procedure to do this, but just to save time, I'm not going to make a procedure, because the procedure would just be setting the x and y values and the colors and then drawing the shapes and then I would have to call them so for now I'm just going to use just normal program so first I'm going to type my like that but I'm going to set x and y to zero meaning the very downmost and leftmost corner and I want to set the uppermost I could type 500 because it's 500 by 500 but if you're using the default window you might uh, you might not know what the maximum x value is or if you're planning on changing this to 700 or something you would have to go back and change this value too or you can type max and then x yes max with two x's I should tell that to my friend Max. He would love it. Anyway, and for Y, we're gonna type Max with a Y. Maxi. So uh, then again, C is 12. And I'm gonna change this to 300 because I know it's a flag and flags are not squares. Well, the Canadian flag at least isn't a square. And as you can see, it's all red. Good. Now, uh, let's reset our va values so that we can make the inner inner part that's uh, that's white. So I'm just going to set as 125, and this is going to be 0 again, and then, actually, I don't, I don't need to reset the Y, so X2 is going to be 375, so it's equal on both sides, and then copy, paste. Now, oops, I forgot to set my C. Now, I want to set this to be white. So the best color for white is zero. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, it's zero. Or you don't even need to reset this. You can just type in here, white. But if you're using integers in a game that uses a lot of functions and stuff, you might not want to type white. You might want type 0 now it's white nice and white okay now let's draw the flag the maple leaf sorry so let's go 200 and then y is going to equal eh, 125 and then the second x is going to equal 300 and y and the second y is going to equal 175 and C is going to equal 12 again because last I checked the maple leaf is not white it's it's uh red Ooh, what happened there I guess I guess I made this too small you know you know what let's go 100 200 there we go nice and Canadian so that is how you make pictures in Turing using graphics. So stick stick tuned to my next video, my 10th episode special, 
that will explain how to do little kind of animations or movements with graphics. So, thank you guys for watching this. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel for more videos on how to program and turn. I'm Organy Supreme, logging off.